uh-uh, wait a minute. Before you send that email, that nasty gram, reading your client to fifth, make sure you just stop and watch this video first. There's no stopping me now. I know my shot should sit down. Money's all over me. I'm called to be rich and be free what is up you guys welcome back to my channel i am ebony yvonne welcome to social gland this is my internet home where i hope you go from confused to the ethical cash generating boss that we both know you are meant to be in today's video we are going to be talking about human resources employee relations and what you can do if you have to fire a difficult client so i wanted to do this video because oftentimes when i'm in online spaces for online coaches entrepreneurs and they're talking about you know dealing with difficult clients oftentimes i'll hear people say like oh i sent them this nasty gram reading them for field letting them know my worth cussing them out and if i'm being honest a lot of people they'll just ghost people and don't even communicate at all and none of the above is the right way to respond when you are dealing with a difficult client so for those of you all who don't know who i am hey how you doing what is up i am a corporate dropout i used to work in human resources for many years as a human resources training instructor and one thing that I used to do is teach this workshop called Supervisory 101, which basically trained the first time managers on how to deal with employees when it came to performance issues, when it came to their workplace behaviors. And so I'm going to actually use a lot of those tips and strategies that I would share with the supervisors and managers when it came to dealing with difficult employees that you can actually leverage in your business if you have to interact and communicate or how you can deal with difficult clients. So let's go ahead and jump right in. And I'm gonna start with the first thing that you wanna do when it comes to dealing with a difficult clients. And this is going to be to just take a moment to breathe, sit back and really just reflect on um, why you feel like the client is being difficult and evaluate the situation, right? Evaluate the situation, but okay, what is the bottleneck? What is the issue? What is the problem that I'm having? Is it the client is unresponsive and they're not communicating with you? Is the client outright rude and talking to you crazy? Um, is the client behind on pay? you're waiting on them to settle their invoice what is the root cause of what's causing the friction between you and your client that is the first thing that you want to do is really just assess the situation so you can determine the best way to move forward once you have assessed the situation the next thing that you want to do is review your contract or agreement if you have a contract in place that outlines um how you're supposed to communicate the terms of your project or your working relationship then you also want to look to see if you have any key clauses within your contract that relate to the issue that you're having with your client so is the client unresponsive did you have communication channels outlined did you have any point of contacts or key stakeholders that you were supposed to contact if any type of issues or problems arose within the duration of your working relationship or the project in the contract, do you have a clause for how to terminate the agreement if you have to terminate it? Or are there parameters around if and when you can terminate your contract and agreement? So that is what you want to do before you take any other actions. If you have a contract in place, if you don't, shame on you. Listen, you, you need to have agreements that outline the expectations, the milestones, and all the details of your um, client projects and relationships, okay? So moving forward, make sure you have those contracts in place. <laughs> but if you have a contract in place, you want to make sure that you use that as your starting point to determine if there's anything in the agreement to outline what action steps you can take or you should take next. Now, once you have reviewed your contract and you know if or if it if it does or doesn't have any clauses to um, help you resolve the issues that you're having. The next thing that you want to do is schedule a meeting with your client. So when you schedule this meeting, you wanna be very straight and to the point. You don't have to go into details about what the meeting is gonna be about, especially if you are firing them, right? <laughs> so just a side note, um, 
when it came to um, working in human resources, whenever we would fire someone, we would always wait till the end of the day to fire someone. And so basically we would schedule a meeting. Typically our hours state government we worked eight to four thirty so at the end of the day between like three and four o'clock we would schedule a meeting with that employee and we would terminate them at the end of the day and we would just schedule a meeting between them their supervisor and a um additional supervisor so it can be a supervisor or manager from another department it could be your boss's boss whoever right you always want to have two supervisors or managers in that meeting but we will always wait to the end of the day and just say, hey, can you meet with me at this time? And then you want to keep it very general about what the meeting is going to be about. You don't want to tell a, a employee or even a client that they're getting fired because they can then come to the meeting irate. You know, there's been a lot of increase in um, workplace shootings and harassments and things like that. Low key. <laughs> And I, I don't even want to share this, but I'm going to say it anyways. So honestly, I had to fire an employee one time. She literally slept and ate M&Ms all day. That was all she did. And I ended up having to terminate her. And when I terminated her, we just met at the end of the day. I met with her. It was me, my manager, and my manager's manager. So it was three of us. And we met with her. We terminated her. And then after she was terminated, she started sending me hate mail to my job, <laughs> like literally our office address to me, sweet number, everything. And she was sending me hate mail, calling me the N word, calling me fat, ugly, a liar and all this stuff because she got terminated for sleeping. And to this day, to this day, I still have pictures of her sleeping. <laughs> but anyways, let, let's get back to dealing with these difficult clients. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to schedule a meeting with your client. You don't want to just abruptly like in the relationship through text message, email or whatever, because when you do that, number one, you have to think about the cycle of trust, right? And typically the cycle of trust starts when, whether it's true or not, one person feels like the other person did something distrustful. And so if you send a text message or email and that person feels blindsided, it, in most cases, it's only going to escalate things from there. So if you want to avoid that and kind of have a very peaceful transition or um, level setting that happens to get the project back on track, if that's the case, you want to plan ahead, schedule a meeting with them, let you know, hey, we need to meet to level set or discuss um, the project, the milestones, whatever. Once you have your meeting scheduled, what you want to do is go back to step number one, and that is going to be reflect on the challenges and roadblocks that you're currently having. And so that way you can actually outline it and have a list for you to take with you when you actually have the meeting with your client. So you want to schedule your meeting, make your outline, or make an agenda for the meeting of the key points that you want to discuss. And then also you want to discuss um, possible scenarios for the best outcome for what can happen so you may decide that when you meet with your client you just want to terminate the contract right that's fine you may decide okay best case scenario we can get the project back on track but you want to outline what the possible outcomes are and what you feel like is best and then kind of add some supporting facts and reasons for each outcome and why you feel like it's the best way to go or what the different options are all right, now your meeting is scheduled. It is rolling around in 15 more minutes. It's time to have the meeting, right? When you have your meeting, listen, listen, this is the most important thing. When you have your meeting, do not go in there talking crazy. Make sure you check your tone. Make sure you're being professional, you're being positive, and you're being upbeat, and you go in with tact, okay? You want to be assertive, but tactful. Don't go in there being aggressive. So... When you have your meeting, what you want to do is you want to start off with positivity. So even if we're terminating an employee, one thing that I always will do is start by what went well, how they supported the team, um, what the expectations were, right? You kind of start out with positivity. You start out with the good things. You can, if you're... Um, 
working on a project you can talk about what you've accomplished so far right so you can say all right we've been working on this project for three weeks in this time we've built interfaces we've set up new systems we've been able to build a client onboarding process we've completed three of the six milestones for this project and right now we're stuck on step number four milestone four and we haven't been able to make progress because of xyz so then you can start off by just highlighting what you've accomplished starting on a positive note to say like hey everything isn't all bad there has been some good in this working relationship or on this project or in that person being an employee and working for you and then once you actually start with the positive stuff you can transition into what's currently causing the friction if it's a lack of communication if it's unresponsiveness if it's people just don't know how to do their job, um, if it's the payment hasn't been made, whatever. You want to address the issue head on. You want to be direct and diplomatic about it without making it seem like you're um, blaming someone or without making it seem like you're attacking them, right? You want to be assertive, direct, and diplomatic, but not confrontational. And so once you have kind of highlighted what the conflict is, the roadblocks, the bottlenecks, the issues, then you want to transition into what the possible solutions are. And so this is where you can outline, okay, at this point, this is where we are. These are the different avenues that we can take from here. We can go down path A, B, or C. And so you can lay out the options for what needs to happen next. And then at this point, you kind of transition from having control of the conversation to allowing the client or employee to then be able to advocate for themselves on what they think the next best step is. So for example, let's say you have a client and the client has not paid their invoice and you're like, hey, we're on milestone four. We've we've successfully completed one, two, and three. The only holdup is settling the invoice so that we can complete this project. So at this point, we can either um, settle the payment and we can continue to move forward and wrap this project up by June 15th. Or if the payment is not settled, then we're going to have to stop work on the project and it will be incomplete. So what do you think is the best path forward? And then you give it over to them and let them say, oh, no, I didn't know the invoice wasn't paid. We will send that over right now, right? It could be that easy. But of course, depending on the situation, it could be a lot more challenging and difficult than that, right? So you may have a client to where they've been unresponsive because they've been unresponsive. It has delayed the project. So the options may be, okay, maybe we need another point of contact instead of directly having to contact you every time we need something but after that put the give solutions and put the ball in the other person's court for them to take ownership of the solution and the next step so once the client has taken ownership of the solution and they have decided what action step is going to be next i'm going to pay the invoice okay i'm going to change the point of contact instead of contacting me if you need a solution contact person b right once there is a solution in place you want to outline what the specific next steps are in order to keep the project moving forward or if the project or contract is going to be terminated you want to outline what that transition plan is going to look like so for example if you're going to cancel out a contract you may say okay so in order to move forward we're just going to decide to dissolve this agreement go our separate ways in order to do that we're going to tie up all the loose ends that we have and then once those loose ends are tied up we will then you know transition everything over to your team or to a particular contact or whatever so you want to make sure that you always have the next steps or a transition plan outlined and then you want to in your meeting on a positive note hey no hard feelings thanks for your time thanks for meeting with me and then after the meeting is over this is the key and if you came from corporate you already know what i'm about to say okay you want to follow up in writing make sure you document 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 um a summary of the conversation that you had in the meeting now one thing that i didn't mention 
when you do your meeting so if you're meeting virtually then obviously if you're using something like zoom or whatever you can record the meeting that way you have you both have a recording of what was said during the meeting what the outcome was you have the issues outlined all of that and so you have the recording that you can refer back to as needed and maybe you just want to um send them a copy and be like all right here's a here's a recording from our meeting today and you could also use note-taking apps that can take meetings for you so in my business i use a tool called read ai so it pretty much joins every meeting that i have as a note taker and it will take notes and add timestamps for the entire meeting from start to finish and then it will automatically email the notes out to all meeting attendees so that is something that you can do as well even if you record the meeting even if you're using a note taking app even if you have a person in a meeting sitting and taking notes you still want to send a follow-up email afterwards that outlines everything that you discussed in your meeting and this is just great to have for documentation um when i worked in human resources we would tell managers this because any event that there's any type of legal action documentation is what wins those cases okay it's not about what happens it is about what what you can prove happened okay so document 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 so you want to make sure that you follow up after the meeting and say okay this was the conversation this was the issue this was the roadblocks and this is the solution that we came to and then also i would add whatever the next steps were or if there was a transition plan really outline the dates and deadlines for what is supposed to happen next all right so that is pretty much how you can actually deal with difficult clients or employees i kind of went into employees a lot but again that's because i come from the world of hr so i'm used to definitely talking about these things from an employee perspective but that is the strategies that i have for you the last little tidbit that i want to leave you with is from the beginning to end you just want to make sure that you always maintain professionalism even if you're in the meeting and things could get a little hostile you want to do your due diligence to really de-escalate any disagreements as much as possible when you can clearly communicate the issue in a assertive but diplomatic way it's going to help you to come to a resolution much faster and easier as well but if the situation gets escalated um people are yelling and screaming back and forth the best thing to do is to just pause and say okay like let's level set let's take a 10 15 minute break and then we'll come back to it if if you still notice everyone is kind of fiery in there then just try to reschedule it for a different day okay or maybe you need to bring in like a third um party a third party mediator or something someone who can help be a non-biased neutral third party that can help you guys to actually discuss the problem at hand that's going on but always 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 be as professional as possible from start to end even if you decide to terminate your working relationship terminate a contract do not then go on social media dragging that person at them <laughs> giving them one star reviews whatever like be professional about it and move forward with class and tact okay so those are the tips that i have for you when it comes to dealing with difficult clients let me know down in the comments below this video did you find these tips to be valuable are you currently dealing with a difficult client you can let me know you don't have to say all the tea right but you can just say yes girl thank you for this video <laughs> and then i'm gonna know already all right but as always i just want to say thanks so much for stopping by my internet home make sure you like comment and subscribe and turn on those notifications so you will be the first one to get notified anytime i upload another video just like this bye y'all